uh, dictation. Right. All right, I think we are live now. Uh, the stream is here. So folks, if you would please post your questions on the pad and um, we will uh, take them up here. Oh boy, so I don't have myself set up with the pad. Um, oh, I can read the questions to you if you would prefer that. That would be fantastic, thank you. Sure, thanks. Well, for the purpose of um, breaking the ice a little bit, I can provide a demonstration, a live demonstration of the use of this uh, voice in plugin for uh, Google Chrome. So I have, uh, well, let's see, let's say new sentence. Uh, I'm on a website that is called uh, 750 Words. It provides a text area where uh, without any other uh, distracting icons for um, the purpose of writing and i'm using it for the purpose of capturing my uh, words that i'm dictating and i have enabled uh, the voice in plugin by hitting the option l uh, command new sentence so it interpreted that uh, command new sentence, even though I didn't pronounce it correctly, which is a pretty good demonstration of its uh, accuracy. New sentence. Uh, oops, that, that didn't work. Undo. Uh, new sentence. So new sentence is a combination of two commands, um, period and um, new line. So I've uh, found it more convenient just to say new sentence than having to say period and new line. You can see that it's uh, able to keep up with most of my uh, speech and um, it, it has to um, interpret the sounds that I'm making and convert those into words. So there's always gonna be a, a lag. New sentence. Um, but I've found that um, I can generate about 2,000, up to 2,000 words an hour uh, while, as I gather my thoughts and talk in my rather s slow fashion of speaking. Uh, new sentence. If you're a really fast speaker, it might have trouble uh, keeping up. Um, new sentence. I like to um, write uh, uh, when I'm using the keyboard with uh, one sentence per line so that when I uh, copy my text and paste it into uh, Emacs, for example, I can uh, resort the sentences very easily by just uh, selecting uh, one line at a time. I like, I like to keep the sentences unwrapped in, in that fashion because that uh, greatly eases the rewriting phase. And I'm almost uh, have sort of a hybrid uh, reverse outlining approach by doing that new sentence. Looks like I have uh, gotten ahead of it a bit and it has uh, not uh, kept up, <laughs> but generally it does keep up pretty well. Nice. Thanks for the demo. You're welcome. Let's see. So I think we have. Yeah, sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. Go for it. Um, you can see that it has uh, this EN means uh, um, English and then dash US. There, there's actually uh, um, about 40 languages that it supports, including several variants of uh, uh, German and about uh, a dozen English dialects. Um, uh, 
Nice. Let's see, I think we have uh, some comments and questions trickling in. Um, so someone is saying that there is a text to command um, application or utility called Clippy, uh, C-L-I-P-E-A, um, that they think is awesome. Um, and someone else is also saying that um, Sox, S-O-X, is another good alternative. Um, so okay. I'll... Uh, I've not explored those yet. So uh, thank you very much for the suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just dropped a link uh, to the pad page here in the chat and on Big Blue Button, if you'd like to open that up as well. Um, but I'll continue reading the comments and questions. So the, um, the first question, I guess, is that could you comment on how uh, speaking versus typing um, affects your logic or, or the content, quote unquote, that you uh, that you write? I find that uh, this is like the difference between writing your thoughts down on a blank piece of printer paper versus paper bound with a leather uh, notebook. <laughs> I don't think there's any real difference. I, I know that some people believe there is a, a solid certain difference, but this is um, for the purpose, I'm using this for the purpose of generating the first draft um, because my skills with uh, uh, using my voice to edit my text is still not very well developed. I'm still more efficient using the keyboard to, for that stage. So the hardest part about writing generally is getting the first crappy draft written. And um, so, so I, I have found that dictation is perfectly fine for that phase. And, um, and I find it actually very conducive for uh, just getting the uh, text out. Uh, the biggest problem that most of us have is applying our internal editor and that inhibits us from you know, generating words in a free flowing fashion. Um, so I generally do my generative writing. So, so actually <clears throat> I divide my writing into two categories, generative writing, generating the first crappy draft and then rewriting. Rewriting is probably 80, 90% of writing where you go back and rework um, the order of the sentences, order of paragraphs, the, the order of words in a sentence and so forth, the, the really hard work that's best done later in the day when I'm more awake, I do my generative writing first thing in the morning when I uh, feel horrible, I'm not very alert. That's when my internal editor is not very awake and I can get more words out, more words past that gatekeeper. <laughs> and uh, so I can do this sitting down, I can do this standing up, I can do this 20 feet away from my computer looking out the window to give my eyes a break. Um, so I, I find uh, it's actually very enjoyable to uh, use it in this fashion. And um, the downside is that uh, I wind up generating three times as much text, and that makes for three times as much work when it comes to <laughs> rewriting the text. And, um, and that means I'm using the keyboard uh, a lot. Uh, later on in the day, and uh, I haven't made any uh, progress on recovering from my own repetitive stress injury. <laughs> um, I hope that I will add uh, the use of um, voice commands, uh, speech to commands uh, for editing the text in the future, and I'll eventually give my hands more of a break. <laughs> right. Thanks. Yeah, that sounds like a nice flow of um, sort of being able to get your words out while your internal editor is still um, not inhibiting things. And then later in the day um, or days, get get back to the actual uh, rewriting and editing. Cool. So um, this allows you to actually separate those two activities, not only by time. So many professional writers will spend several hours in the morning doing the generative part, and then they'll spend the rest of the day rewriting. Um, so, so they have separated those two activities temporally. Uh, what most people actually do is, you know, they, they, they do the generative part and then they, they write one sentence and they apply that internal editor right away because they want to write the first draft in a perfect, <laughs> uh, as a perfect version, as the final draft. 
and, and that yeah. and that's what slows them down dramatically. Um, yeah. But this also allows you to separate these two activities in terms of modality. You're you're going to do the generative writing by voice and the rewriting by keyboard. So I, I think this is like uh, what most people, one way that many people can get into using uh, speech to text in a productive way. Nice. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's see. I think we have about uh, three or four minutes uh, live. So um, I think we have time for at least another question. Um, have you tried the chat GPT voice chat interface? And if so, how has been your experience of it? Um, as someone experienced with voice control, interested to hear your thoughts, um, performance relative to the free software tools in particular? I don't have much experience uh, with that particular software. I have uh, used uh, Whisper a little bit, and so that's related. And of course, you have this uh, problem of um, uh, lag. Um, so I find that it's uh, Whisper is good for spitting out a sentence, you know, maybe for uh, a doc string in a uh, um, programming file. But um, I find that. Uh, uh, it's very prone to hallucinations, um, and I find myself spending half my time <laughs> uh, deleting the hallucinations, and I, I, f I feel like the net gain is um, diminished um, as a result. Uh, or there's not much of a net gain in terms of uh, what I'm getting out of it. Whereas I really appreciate the high level of accuracy that um, I'm getting from uh, voice in. I would uh, use uh, Talon voice for dictation, but at this point, I, um, there's a significant difference between uh, the level of accuracy of uh, voice in versus Talon voice. Uh, it's, it's large enough of a difference that um, I'll probably use voice in for a while until I can figure out how to get uh, Talon voice to um, generate more accurate uh, uh, text. Cool. Thank you. I think we have at least another two or three minutes. So if, if folks have any other questions, uh, please feel free to post them on the pad. And I'll uh, check IRC now as well. Right. So I see one question on IRC asking, uh, are any of these voice command uh, slash dictation, dictation tools uh, free Libre? software uh, they cannot find that information which i think is so, part of it you just mentioned the voice in software there's um uh, it's a freemium so it uh, the answer is no uh, to be able to add the commands uh the custom commands you have to pay 48 dollars a year the talon voice software is free and um the um access the only limitation there is uh access to the um, language model if you want to get the beta version you, you need to subscribe to patreon um, to, to this help support the developer um, and i found <laughs> i did do that and i really didn't find much of an improvement <laughs> um, <laughs> so i and, you know i really don't intend to do that in the future but <laughs> um yeah, but otherwise, uh, Talon Voice, everything is open it's, uh, and free, uh, and the um, Slack community is uh, incredibly welcoming. Um, you know, it's, the parallels with the Emacs community are pretty striking. Excellent, thank you. Okay, I think we have about another minute on on the live stream, but uh, I believe the big blue button room here. Um, is open and will be open. So if folks um, want to uh, join, if Blade maybe has a couple of extra minutes. Um, sure. Awesome. Yeah, then you're welcome to join and uh, chat with Blaine and ask any further questions or just do general chatting. So I see a question, uh, how good is Talon compared to Whisper? Um, so, uh, let's see. With Talon, I find that the first part of the sentence will be uh, fairly accurate. And then um, when I'm doing dictation, 
and then towards the end the, uh, the errors start to accumulate <laughs> so in general i think it's error rate is about uh, five words out of a hundred or so or will be wrong um and with whisper whisper is wonderful because it will insert punctuation for you um but uh, I guess its errors are longer and that it will hallucinate full sentences for you. <laughs> so th they, they both have uh, significant error rates. They're just different kinds of errors. <laughs> Interesting. But hopefully both will, you know, will improve over time. Right. See, um, there's a question. Are the green block the author for this talk? Alan? I'm not sure what that question means. Well, there is a green block of uh, text um, that's, I think, being generated from, from voice, to, voice to text, uh, speech to text. At the top of the pad, I think that's their question. Um, so I have this uh, VoiceIns um, software operating on this uh, GitHub's uh, on this uh, 750words.com site where um, I do my uh, uh, generative writing at the start of the day. And um, it just provides a uh, text area that's free of uh, distractions. And uh, we can see the text that's being recorded as I talk. Um, I haven't been saying the command new sentence, uh, so uh, there isn't any punctuation <laughs> over our uh, discourse. Um, okay. One thing that uh, I do like at the start of the day is um, I, I like to write in log tech. Ultimately, uh, that's how I um, store my writing. So, uh, new sentence, new sentence. Um, let's see, insert start day. So this is an example of uh, a chunk of. Um, uh, La tech code. So I have uh, some reflections on, you know, when did I wake up this morning and how do I feel? Uh, reflections on the prior day and uh, in terms of what did I get done yesterday? Do I remember what I did yesterday? <laughs> what happened last night? Focus of today. What's to be done today? Um, uh, and uh, so on. So I actually I think I have more down here. Um, then I've set up these lists so that um, I can expand them easily. If I say item, then the cursor uh, shows up at the start of an item and I have it coded so that um, that new phrase that I speak will start with a capital letter. As, as you can see, so capitalize the word and. Um, so in spite of its rather uh, limited uh, command syntax, there's some, it's enough to get started and maybe in the future they'll add more features. Cool, that's uh, neat. So um, I think uh, this is very helpful for, um, you know, <laughs> doing things like, uh, um, expanding the names of people. Um, so you can do set up commands like uh, expand the name of a colleague to um, go from their first name to their full name with a proper spelling of their last name, <laughs> which, uh, you know, you can wind up spending a lot of time trying to look that up. And uh, so this is um, this voice in with a custom commands enables you to store the hard to remember information like that. Great. 
I see another question. Um, how good is Talon compared to Whisper? I think you might have answered that already, at least partially, but. Right, yeah, I talked about how uh, it seems that Whisper will uh, carry out uh, hallucinations, so it will generate yeah. long tracks of error, <laughs> whereas uh, Talon will tend to generate more errors towards the ends of sentences, in, in my experience. Um, and the errors are generally shorter in extent. It doesn't hallucinate as uh, for, for long tracks. Right. Okay, I think that's all the questions that we have on the pad. Um, if folks want to join here on Big Blue Button for a few minutes and chat with uh, Blaine, that also works. Um, let's see, I'm probably going to have to drop in a few minutes to um, catch the next speaker. Um, but uh, many thanks, Blaine, for your great talk and for the interesting demos and the question and answer. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for hosting us. Cheers. Glad to have you. Yeah, this is uh, really amazing to you know, hold this conference uh, with people from all around the world connected together through web browsers. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very neat uh, what technology can do if and when it's working correctly. <laughs> I know it can be a little frustrating at times, but when it's working, it's it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> good purpose of computers is all the computers run the same code so that people you know a lot of people work on the same thing and build upon each other's works for uh, journaling I found one one good compromise between editing and uh, stream of thought journaling one good compromise between editing and being able to do it again and just kind of helps me do my thoughts even when I do it is when you do org mode and you have the bullets it kind of allows you to naturally shard your thoughts in a way that's really easy to edit reorder I saw you kind of did that with your Mac LaTeX macro where you said item and it would put you down to the next item does how much do you do stuff like that um, that's right how much do you do stuff like that where you use like org mode headings and then you uh, reorder them? Because like I did that with also the K outline from Hyperbole package or the or Emacs org mode later on after the stream. Yeah, so, so I could actually um, set this up so I um, have a lot of uh, snippets for org mode <laughs> and I, I could have an org mode version of my uh insert start day snippet and, and and carry things out in org mode um so so i use org mode from time to time um i often use it for the purpose of like writing readme files for projects to uh, outline you know the purpose of the project and uh, um say for a like a, a director that contains a, pro a coding project um, and I think, uh, this would, um, that, uh, so the main limitation of voice in is it only works in a web page and you have to have an internet connection, whereas Talon voice is uh, perfect for something like org mode in that, um, it, you don't need an internet connection and it will operate anywhere that you can place a cursor. I haven't found a place where it doesn't work. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. So as you saw in my talk, perhaps uh, um, you can run it um, in a terminal or a remote computer. You can run it in a virtual machine. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, it's definitely If you can impressive. put your cursor there, it, it will work. And um, so as you might imagine if you have if you use bash aliases i've you know worked for you know, it's one of the first things i did was map um talent commands to bash aliases uh, so that i can uh, do all kinds of crazy things inside of the terminal um and 
Um, I, I, there are, you know, so there's some support already for uh, using talent in Emacs. There's uh, some Emacs um, functionality that's built into Talon. Um, so, so when you are in Emacs, there's some features that are automatically available. And then others have uh, developed, uh, are developing uh, packages, which I don't think are available yet in Elpa. Um, there's one that does the uh, font locking or syntax highlighting of uh, Talon files and uh, another that adds some uh, additional functionality that I'm um, regrettably not yet uh, familiar with. Well, as an example with like how the sharding of the thoughts, like let's say, oh, how, how has my day went? It's went good for reasons one, two, three, and bad for reasons A, B, C. And then later on I might think, oh, there's an, I also, my day went good for reasons four, five, six, then you, I can, then you jump up and so the uh, like i found like yeah the org mode subheadings because you're able to jump around easily reorder them after the fact it's a very streamlined approach to the to uh the and to the stream of thought then the editing and that's right extremely and like, powerful and even with the stream of thought just because like even when you're editing that in real time, like, oh, wait a minute. I I thought of another reason that my day went good, even though I was talking about how it was going bad now. So I can, so you jump up and then you, you do that and then you have it, you easily summarize your thoughts and whatnot. That's right. And, and I think uh, uh, org mode is really ideal for that uh, kind of, um, so, so yeah, I, I see your point in terms of that sort of a blend of uh, gener generative writing and uh, editing, and, um, and it's also kind of parallel to uh, mind mapping. Uh, I use this uh, mind mapping software called uh, iThoughts X, where you know I'll, I'll <laughs> generate all these chi children <laughs> items, and then I'll, I'll drag them around and resort them. And um, uh, uh, so, so they can have uh, ch children of their own and you know, grandchildren and so on in terms of the levels of the nodes. And um, it's pretty much the same sort of thing with a nested hierarchy that you can uh, have with uh, org mode. I just, I think, you know, having uh, several alternate modes of uh, or modalities of, um, playing with thoughts is useful. So sometimes I'll hit a wall or, and uh, we're just not really generating anything um, in a, a text mode. But if I switch to using the mind mapping, it, it just seeing it arranged with the connecting lines uh, uh, plays on a different part of the brain, I think. And uh, it can be incredibly stimulatory. Um, it can stimulate a lot of new thoughts. That's something that I haven't messed around too much with is the mind mapping software. But uh... because the closest thing that we have to it in Emacs is um, Orgrome, in the th in terms of like the three D uh, visualization of uh, with the uh, Orgrome uh, GUI or. Um, or UE. <laughs> um, as so, well as being able to generate SVG diagrams and stuff like that. I think those two things would allow you stuff like Orgrome or Denote, and then the diagrams would be the good ways of doing that in Emacs, but they don't have the mind map programs as well. They're not as well developed. There is There are a couple uh, mind mapping packages, but they're not uh, I, yeah, they're not it as advanced. Like the, the best ones were uh, JavaScript web page that it, that Emacs interacted with very well, and so they kind of you know worked ar around and had a little uh, integration with the two. So when you'd be jumping around your when you'd be clicking on the web page, it would be pointing you to different places and buffers. So okay. Like those are those, 
the there's an like org roam node program where it, it kind of shows the looks like a mind map. You can click and drag them a little bit, so it's a little interactive. Yeah, I, I, I'm, so I'm not familiar with that. I've, um, I'll have to look into that. Um, that. That sounds very interesting. I found that I like didn't know better though than Norgrom, so it doesn't. Uh, so, so, uh, why is that? Well, one of the things I'm, I want to be able to. I don't like the feeling of being trapped inside org mode documents. Like I, I want to be able to write, even though I don't really use Markdown and I like org mode better than that. Like for instance, I also use the K outline from the Hyperbole package. That, that's what my, I got to talk on the stream of thought journaling for, with K outline. And so I was like, I just don't like the feeling of being trapped in one document. And uh, Denote has the ability to, re it renames the files. So you get keywords in, like a PDF file, so you can take, so you can link to that with your notes without it all disappearing because it's not an org mode document. Plus, the ability of having it run on multiple computers or with like multiple people, the database kind of gets screwed up when you try like running it under sync thing. Sync. More fragile. Uh, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Um, how far are you? Uh, uh, so so are, you, are you a regular practitioner of uh, the Zettelkasten approach? Uh, trying to be. Incrementally improving it. Uh, I partly work too much, like, testing out the org roam versus the notes to use it too much. So part of it is I just tweak with it too much before using it and then <laughs> oh it's so fun to tweak it <laughs> but i think mostly as, as i i have these tools i know where they are so whenever i do need them i can use them even though i don't always use them i so i have about a thousand notes in my org room zettelkast and <laughs> I've actually, it's kind of cool that you can export it and move it into other programs. Um, I have like moved it to uh, Obsidian and played with it in Obsidian for a while, or maybe added to it in Obsidian, moved it back to Orgrome. <laughs> it, it's, uh, um, but I'm not convinced. I mean, uh, that uh, I, I think that Nicholas Luhmann was very successful with it because he spent five hours a day or whatever working with it. <laughs> and and I think I would have to do a, put in a similar amount of effort to get this kind of benefits that he gained from it. I, I'm waiting for somebody to do a scientific study, you know, controlled trials to see, to prove whether there's a real benefit. Um, oh yeah, so, so. with the, with the Zettelcast, I'm like one of the things where you have like the one for the sections and then the 1.1 or you know how it then the notes that it does that's different the denote it has the ability to use a hierarchy manage which org roam does everything it can to eliminate but you can use them both in tandem uh, they call it signatures so okay and to me one of the cool features of denote would be being able to use like the signatures for the things that make sense like one of the ideas is if you don't exactly know where this is but you know it goes into the section you can just use a signature maybe don't even have too much of a file name like oh this is just another thought on uh well you wouldn't use it for this but it's like my day went good for reasons one two three four five and you could just use the denote signature to do one two three four five just as you have new ideas on like a subject or like cars are cars are not this car is nice because of reasons x y z or these types of car four wheelers are nice because of x y z and you could just keep on doing that rather than having to get a new name for each one of those files or you could choose not to have it but the ability to have it optionally in to me sounds like a really nice combo because then you i could agree 
Yeah, I've actually imposed a hierarchy in my Zettelkast and in uh, Orgrome. I just, I can't uh, imagine having <laughs> random ideas um, that they, they, they need some kind of structure. Um, I always have when, some kind of parent node to attach them to. <laughs> with the workflow I'm trying to develop with it, like part of it is I'm just trying to optimize the workflow before I before it feels really, really, really good and I don't want to tweak with it or I don't know. Or maybe I don't always need the tool, but like some of the distinctions it seems like that I want is a different, like I want a daily journal for stream of thought or your stream of thoughts. Then I want a separate one for your to-do list because what you like, uh, you want very different properties for each of those. Like for to-do list, you want hierarchical uh limited but if you have more than three priority items you don't have a priority item and it's not a good to-do list it's just uh, it's just unordered thoughts you're trying to so it's a wishful list because <laughs> you won't get most of those things done <laughs> beyond the first three <laughs> mm -hmm. and then when you're trying to do the other stuff the stream of thoughts like all that stuff i probably don't want to go straight into like my zettel casting because some of us probably like it's not or it's noisy it might be redundant you don't know how it fits into it because you haven't done that processing on it this hasn't been refined so like you don't want to refine like i find that spell checking is detrimental to me i don't want spell checking i don't want spell checking i don't want syntax highlighting i just want to talk or to just write. If I have mistakes, I can turn on that later, do it, because otherwise it will distract me and makes that process worse. Yep, yep, it definitely interferes uh, with the flow. So, yeah, when you're, so yeah, when you're doing the getting things done, like, it, that's why I want them in, would be, want, would want them in separate files is, yeah, you want them like ordered, numbered lists, uh, smaller. And then with the other, with the stream of thought, with journaling, you'd want it just unordered. Thoughts land wherever they may, may, maybe, maybe not even like machine generated timestamps. So you don't even have to worry about the names of it, as an example. So, yeah, very different properties for what you want for both of those uh, modalities. So you you saw perhaps in that snippet that I had that at you know working on my to do list at the start of the day, but in a certain sense that is not ideal time. <laughs> I really haven't optimized um, uh, the, the timing of assembly of the to do list. I, I think in you know retrospect, uh, it's just by lifelong habit I do that at the beginning of the day, but. Um, probably would be better to do it at night or the night before and so you sort of prime your brain to you know go just get up and go go after those items you were um you've or maybe you, you want to revise the items a little bit after sleeping on it but um after your subconscious has worked on it, those items have you uh, do you have like a, a daily routine that you follow in terms of generating those kind of lists no, as I said, like mostly I just got uh, scaffolding for this stuff when I want to do it. I enjoy building the scaffolding and I know where the tools are when I need it. And I start using them when I need it, but I don't I don't have it too consistent. Okay. So, um, so, OK, so so you, you look so far at the uh, note and. Uh, um or groom and you're using uh, k outline and uh, are there other tools that you've explored i've tried using whisper.el and nerd dictation to do what your talk was about speaking speech to text to see how that changes because it does change what you think what you write down when you speak it rather than write it same thing as like when you have uh 
when you're thinking about when you eliminate the editing, it changes the way you write. When you have the spell checking, it changes the way you write to a much smaller degree. But that's yeah, I, the, I, that's the stuff I really haven't gotten working as well or underdeveloped. So the, the dictated text, you know, winds up, uh, I'll move it in, uh, often I move it into, um, on Overleaf, uh, uh, this website for law tech documents. Uh, I have a plugin for Rightful and uh, that, I use that to clean up <laughs> uh, my word choices and um, some grammar. And I, I use Grammarly, I'll copy and paste. Uh, it just depends on the nature of the writing, how serious and it is, um, how polished it has to be. Uh, um, if I, uh, it's, if it's really uh, vital, like for a grant application or something, I'll paste that into Grammarly and work on trying to get the writing level uh, to the lowest possible grade level. <laughs> to make it as clear as possible um, to uh, as wide of an audience as possible. Um, One of so the I've things I kind of wish with the, like all the spell checking Grammarly is like, I kind of wish you could say like, hey, what would uh, uh, the settle cast in person think of what I wrote? Who, what would Einstein think of what I wrote? Because rather than just trying to make one uniform way of talking, it's like people talk differently, and that's an advantage. And I can't, I really wish, like, you maybe these GPT programs could do well. It's like, I really wish that's like it could help you with the grammar that maybe give you thoughts on like what your notes are, like. What does this person think of your thoughts? Well, does this person think of your thoughts? Well, does this person think of, of your thoughts? That's true. Um, yeah, and I could probably do that even through ChatGDP now. I haven't I haven't uh, spent time on trying that out, um, but I, I bet that capabilities are already. It was. It would be nice. If it was like built in. <laughs> to Emacs, right? <laughs> it's a package. Yeah. <laughs> that would Doesn't be very cool. Grammarly uh, have some sort of, like the grammar where they help you the way you write the, like for, for instance, removing redundant words and, you know, uh, yeah, it's supposed to be like beyond the, just spell checking, right? Right. So it, there, and there's actually a Grammarly um, package for Emacs and, and you get some some of the functionality out of it, even yeah, I've paid for the subscription to get the advanced features, but I've may, I, maybe I don't have my configuration set up correctly. I, I just found it was easier to copy and paste a big you know, paragraph at a time into uh, the desktop application, and it will um, go through and you know, find those redundancies, uh, junk English. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're like, uh, <laughs> like it'd be yeah, really um, interesting trying to have uh, one of these. It, that was my problem with a lot of the Grammarly type programs. Is I'm I, I want something that would do that. Like, be really interesting seeing one that's like an old English type thing or like that Lumen person where it's just like, how does this person write? And because it would be, it would spit out something a lot different. Just diff like oh, if you, yeah, you put different people. Most definitely, yes, they would have a completely different uh, thinking and writing style. Um, and uh, so, I the actual the purpose of doing that would be to stimulate um, a new way of thinking or writing, I guess, on your part. The purpose of writing is to communicate. You and writing, you can all, one of the tar targets for that could be yourself. So it's like, I'd much rather have a comprehensible sentence than a punctually correct one. One of those is far more valuable and far more correct English or language. 
yeah, one's more effective <laughs> at communicating to yourself. Yes. Uh, well, one's using the tool. One's the other. You're getting. You're trying to be used by the tool, and they're not the same thing. No, that's true. Um, uh, well, I view I view myself as being responsible for my writing and uh, uh, um, <laughs> being the final judge of it, um, and. Uh, as a scientist, I have to, uh, my, my mantra is it's got to be clear and, um, and then precise and then concise in that order. <laughs> and I claim that, uh, you know, that's the order with which I go through doing revisions. Um, clarity is, you know, if it's not clear, it's useless. <laughs> it's it's got to be clear to me, but it's got to be clear to a lot of people who for whom english is not a first language and uh then after that i, I gotta worry about precision and and then uh, uh conciseness but um those can't be done at the expense of clarity so, so it's quite a battle that goes back on like the to-do list where it's like if you have more than three i like your, the purpose of doing that is to help organ of a to-do list is help is to have you help choose what you're going to do for the day which is why if you have more than three items if you have 50 items on there you're not going to get it 50 of those items done so maybe you pick the easiest ones to do not necessarily the ones you want that you want or need to be done so it's like the, the process of choosing those like I don't know. Like I found that a very good rules. Like if up to three priority items, as you, and then also when you look back and you see that you did those three items, who cares about this? I'd rather get those three items done than any number of secondary tasks. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, you're very, very uh, right about that. Um, I don't. Uh, I used to, you know, use this uh, pattern of. Uh, assigning uh letters and so you have like uh you know and based on like a hierarchy of you've got the urgent and important <laughs> of course that um you got to deal with those and then the next thing down is the important and uh and, and then uh, so on um and but i tend to just generate these terribly long lists that uh most of those items would go on what is known as a grass catcher's list of things that you will may get to someday, but you, there's no way you can get to them today. But you, but I feel compelled. I, I need to capture them. <laughs> I may want to do them eventually. And they they wind up on my list. <laughs> so yeah, my ideas on that is like with a Zettelkasten where you have the day thoughts and the day journal, then you have your Zettelkasten, which I don't think should shouldn't have too close of a connection because. One's a lot more, what's the word, optimized. It's a knowledge uh, base. Yes, one's more processed. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, one's actually much more processed. The other is you don't want that process because you want it to flow from your head with as little friction as possible. The other one you want to be uh, processed so that, like when you look it up and stuff like that, it's more efficient. Same thing with your to-do thing. So like, oh yeah, I guess there's one more category. Like I found, I found my three favorite way rather than like priority one, two, three is primary tasks, which basically generally goes up to three secondary tasks. And then I like to have a third category, unplanned tasks. And I just have those wrote down in a heading in an org mode file. And then I put the tasks in there rather than using the agenda like too much i don't know just i found that that was my favorite uh way of doing it and then you have like another file that would just be your dump of anything you want to do and that'd be like that you could pull from to get your day or i guess something that's actually better than a day is doing it all by a week at a time. I found that that's actually a lot nicer because 
uh, thinking about what you do in a week seems like a nicer unit. So are you, where you have like a week, then you have your day, and then you have like the three categories of priority, secondary, and uh, unplanned. At least that's been my favorite iteration on the um, week of the to-do thought process workflow. I had a colleague that was very effective at uh, planning on a weekly basis and, you know, he would just, you know, get his weekly list of things to get done. And he, he was very good at pounding through that list and getting them done. I have been too much of a day oriented person and a week oriented person, but uh, um, to, to adapt his approach, but uh, I've been considering that too. <laughs> I, I, I think what I, don't do enough of is uh, pulling back to the you know month level semester level year level five year level ten year level well, and, that, uh, that's the advantage of planning it by a week is like you can have like so you'd have your week and then maybe you have like one section after friday friday or last day of the week and, it, and this is like your this is just your like uh staging so this is where you stage all the tasks and then what like you can just stay in your staging, write them all down and then uh, use alt and your arrow keys to quickly reorder all of them. In the week and then when you're looking at one day and, and you're just looking at ordering everything well it makes a lot of sense when you just say. I don't really want to do that like I want this done this week I don't necessarily want it done on this day so it just. That's why I found that the week approach works a lot nicer. Even, yeah. Because that way, yeah, like you're not. Idea, uh, of a staging time. You like schedule some time in your week to do the staging. The staging is more of just like, these are the things I would like to get done. And then when you schedule it, like, then you kind of schedule it by just using the alt left key, the alt arrow keys to just. Oh, I want this done. It looks like this would work really good on this day. This one looks like it'd work good on this day, and then. So you, you're a uh, um, you, you still utilize uh, org agenda. Uh, try to. I don't know. I <laughs> I found that it works at least better without it. Yeah, I, that I way I also it. get a log of everything I've done which I, I can't find a way that it seems easier to just make new files for it. And rather than like, you could use it with org agenda, but like one of the things that you want is with it is to look back at it, reflect. And so like, if you have the, the if you have if you open up the file with like two levels or three levels of headings to where you just see like the priority tasks, you can get a very nice overview of, of saying like, I did my priority tasks this day and this day. So like you get the, the numbers next to the agenda to the things. And so you can easily just say, I've done this. I mean, it would be nice if I could figure out a way of doing agenda to give me percentages, but I haven't figured that out. And, seeing the granular level but I can easily scan that with my eyes so I just did it by hand rather than the agenda um yeah I've, I've tried to use agenda a few times and um and and, and pretty seriously um but uh, I keep uh, bouncing off it I think I get too many things built in or scheduled and that and that, and I just don't get to them <laughs> I feel bad about it, <laughs> and I wind up uh, uh, badging it. Um, so, so that that's one area where you know there's probably some potential for optimizing and, and making that work better. Um, there's a lot of customizing you can do with Agenda. It's uh, it's amazing. <laughs> for me, it was though the I wanted there to be a separation between the daily to-do lists and like your grab bag, which I think agenda works a lot better for a grab bag. And I want a nice way of looking back at my uh, to-do daily to-do logs. So 
I kind of want them to be separated, so I just did them separate. Uh, with the agenda, I could never figure out exactly how I want that to work, how the files would look, how the uh, and how all the Emacs settings would interact with it. I mean, I'm sure I could, but that's why I yeah, opted for a uh, um, week weekly files, or at least that's what I that's my most refined idea on the process. That's a good idea. Um... So I take my approach is a little different in that I'm generating this text on a daily basis and popping it into this to one um, document file per day and a like a diary on um, overleaf as a uh, big um, so it winds up being 365 uh, sections and where every month is a chapter and uh, it's uh, compiles quickly enough, um, even though it can, it's often up to a thousand pages long by the end of the year. And I have all these, uh, of course, with the PDF, I can search through it. So that's not as you can't do <laughs> the kind of really sophisticated searching that you can do with org mode. Um, but just doing that, um, it sure has been very helpful in digging up information like on, uh, the uh, little protocols and how I attack, uh, accomplish a certain task that I have to <laughs> do a year later uh, are um, to have a record of what I did on a certain day. And then I'm, somebody above me might be trying to hold me to account um, what got done. I can look that up pretty very quickly. Uh, it's, it's documented. Um, I find that to be just any kind of, you know, Thorough documentation system is very useful. I've also messed with having it all in like one file rather than by a week file. And oh, I, I, I ran into true trouble with uh, like once you get a lot of uh, items, like if you have a thousand item headings, <laughs> I've had org files with a thousand headings. It can be so hard to scroll through. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, some limitations I'm run into with the uh, Emacs being single threaded. <laughs> At least with, yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's one of the things is like, how exactly do you want this, the information structured? Because it can change how it's retrieved. Ooh, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, so, so, as an example, as an example, like when I had all those org mode, when I had was doing the daily logs and I put it all in the date uh, and then the priority secondary unplanned tasks. And then I had it go ha stay at that, uh, get auto expanded by that level by default. So I didn't see the individual tasks. And, you, and then I had a, so, and then it would say like I complete 205 or something like that of secondary tasks and then just being able just to quickly scan all the days and say oh it just the feedback you get from that is worth a lot and i don't think it's something it's not something i could think of how you do an agenda even though i got done in the text files just because you get that doesn't expand all the way so you so you can quickly just see on this day i I did this well on this day. I did this well, all within and four lines per day. So it's not that doesn't that's not very visually verbose. Probably about as visually verbose as you want it. They're not super long. You easily see the two of three and stuff like that 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 you get done. So you can quickly and say, "Oh well, these are the days where I." got my primary tasks done or this week and th this day I didn't do it well and you could it helps you correlate like your feelings with your to-do lists and journals and whatnot yeah I think that's very powerful because it uh, that's a summarizing capability um, allows you to you know pull back and uh, get a overview. 
and yeah, as I said, it's like the, the feedback from that is almost when I did that feels like half the reason or should be like half the reason is, and it's something that you, I don't, if you use the agenda as it is, you wouldn't, I don't know how you would get it. Like saying, like looking at the week by week basis breakdowns, you might be able to get like percentages, which would be nice. Like I did this well, or like habit track. I don't, there might be things that could offer you, but, Yeah, um, so I'm pretty obsessed about uh, tracking effort on various kinds of projects uh, uh, or various kinds of activities and uh, to uh, get some s feedback in, in that regard. And then you, but you got the, so I define a project as anything that requires work more than uh, at different points in time, more than one time. I'll give you. I'll email you my uh, org mode template that I made that that demonstrates that. Okay. Um, I don't know if you do. You have your email in your in in your talk notes or anything. Um, I think I should have it on the first slide. There should be my email address. Um, I sh I, I can add it to my um talk notes. Not okay. There. Would you want me to show it to you at all? Sure. That'd be great. All right. Let's see. A share screen button, right? Yeah, so let's see, uh, yeah, I'm off. Yeah, it's the right button. Uh, can you not share the screen on this? Do I have uh, something going here? <laughs> Let's see. I have, uh, I see some stuff on here. Um, I wonder if I'm still active. It shows, uh, share screen, cancel. Maybe they just did it through OBS. Hmm. Maybe maybe uh, I only have uh, permission to share. Um, I can put my email address in the chat. I guess I'll just email it to you. But uh, let's see. Yeah, I think the way that they did it on the on any of the other videos, if they shared the screen, they just shared the webcam they just took over the webcam with obs and shared what they wanted with it oh okay or at least i'm guessing yeah i'll give that to you okay right, well i guess i'll let you go watch the rest of the emacs videos and this has been a great conversation thank you very much i appreciate your willingness to share your thoughts on this matter <laughs> um of you know this is vital uh, time management it's it's, it's a kind of key aspect of life <laughs> in my opinion. oh yeah the way the how the function yeah, the re back to one the of the big reasons to use emacs is and to use the keyboard is that 
not to speed you up. Like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. But it keeps you in the stream, uh, keeps you in the flow state where you can, makes the computer more transparent, keeps you in the flow state. And which then just makes you think better. And yeah, you, and the thing with that is, you, I have you, I have no idea what the limits of that would be. Because you think, because yes, yeah, it's, it's not about speeding up how many words you say a minute. I mean, that, that's nice and all, but when you start doing that, when you start removing all these friction points, all of a sudden, the number quality and types of thoughts you get start increasing. That's right. Which is the goal. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rest of the meeting. Will do.